Hi, this is Peter Smallage. I'm the New York State Extension Forester, and I'd like to share with you an example of how to use Web Soil Survey to find information about soils on your property, and particularly how to find the site index of a particular soil that you might be interested in. So our starting point is going to be to locate the Web Soil Survey website, and you can do that by a simple Google search looking for Web Soil Survey USDA Gov, and you should see a page that looks like this. So this is the opening page. It gives some general descriptions, and then it's a matter of just clicking on the green button in order to start Web Soil Survey. So then when you click Web Soil Survey, it will take you to an opening page. I'll survey the Start button. It'll take you to a map of the United States. And uh, what you can see here is after I've typed in an address, and I found a specific location, um, it, it pulls me into that location. So I usually use the Address button under Quick Navigation, as you can see in the left-hand panel type in the address. So this is uh, part of a property that belongs to Cornell University. I don't know the specific address. It's somewhere north of uh, Ithaca. Uh, so we, we have, we can see the property and we will recognize it as our property or a property that we're working on. And what we need to do is to outline that property uh, and create what's known as an area of interest. So in the toolbar that's immediately above the satellite image, you see a series of boxes. On the far right hand side, there is a box that if you cursor over it, it says define AOI area of interest by polygon. So we click on that once and we're going to assume that the, that the primary uh, interest that we have is the rectangular woodlot in the center of the screen and the dog legged work a woodlot off to the right. We have some fields associated with this. We have a farming operation or an agricultural operation. So we're going to start in the upper left hand corner and the way this works is every time you click you create uh, a junction or an, a, uh, a, a corner on your property. We'll assume this is what our property looks like. We have some of the road, and then we go over east of that house. I'm just making up this property boundary. I'm not. I'm not sure who has who owns this property. Some of it is owned by Cornell University. And then when you're done, you double click at that final location. So you're looking at a, a red uh, shape on the screen and that's uh, processing now. And then you can see that it's blue hatched. So that's defined our area of interest. And you can look in the panel on the left under AOI information. We can give this a name and we can call it farm woodlot. Tompkins County, uh, for lack of any other name, we see that we've outlined an area that's 143.5 acres. So that's a way you can check to see if you have about the right sh um, area for your property. If you know the, the acreage, then this is one way that you can check and make sure that you've clicked the right corners. The next thing we need to do is to create a soil map. So we'll click on the tab in the upper uh, left-hand corner that says Soil Map and it will display for us that same area of interest and give us in the left hand column a, uh, a list of all of the soil map units. So we have a uh, first we have a Bath Valoi soil, we have the Bath Valoi Lansing soil, we have an Erie a Chippewa, an Erie Chippewa, and then a Langford Channery soil loan. And you can see that all of those are outlined on our area of interest. So we only see the soils associated with our area of interest. Our next step then is, is having done this, 
Uh, first, we want to make sure that we'll be able to come back to this. So we click on the link button and we can see a very long URL. But if we uh, do a select all, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. If we uh, highlight that link uh, and then and then say copy, we can paste that link into an email and send it to ourselves and then we'll be able to recreate this image again. Next, we'll want to look at uh, Soil Data Explorer. So we click the third tab across the top, Soil Data Explorer. Give it a moment. Uh, beneath the tab for Soil Map, we see the option to view soil information by use. We're going to focus in on forest land, so we click the forest land option, and that will restrict some of the information that we're going to have access to, which is fine. So then in the left-hand column, you see a series of yellow tabs that start with building site development, disaster recovery, land classifications, land management, and things like that. So we're going to jump right down to vegetative productivity. We'll click on that, and we're interested in uh, forest productivity site index. So we'll click on that button and we can see that there are then the options for mapping, table, and descriptions of ratings for a number of different species. So if we want to look at the site index rating for eastern white pine, we would select eastern white pine. And for those of you unfamiliar with site index, site index is simply a measure of a uh, way to use tree height as a measure or an index of the quality of the site. So the faster a tree grows in height, the better that site index. And that's that's usually a pretty good indicator of soil quality is, is tree height. So it says in this case for eastern white pine or some other species, what is the height of that tree, the expected height of that tree at 50 years of age. So you can compare one soil to another soil for white pine and see where your white pine is going to grow the best. Uh, and then if we, uh, from there, we click on the button for view rating. And we wait patiently. We can see uh, red coloration and then gray coloration. And if we scroll down, we see that the only the only soil that we really have any uh, rating for is the Langford Channery Silt Loam. And that's that's what on our map would be labeled L A B. So and we can see that that has a, a site index of 75. So for the other soils, there's no rating. And we can see that the, the red coloration is the Langford Channery Silt Loam. Uh, the red does not mean danger or bad. It just is a way to identify those soils uh, where, where we would expect to have a certain growth of trees of white pine. So we can try that for a different species. Let's look up tulip tree and we'll click on then view rating. Oop, this one's not available. So let's try uh, Northern Red Oak. So for, for some of these sites, there's uh, no information available for these soils. So here we have blue and red, and we can see that red oak on this property has pretty much the same uh, site index across all soils, slightly slower growing on the Langford Channery than on the other soils, but still 65 to 70 feet in height at age 50, which is a pretty decent site index. Now, we may also want to look at, um, at each individual soil and see what each individual soil would produce for a, a wide range of, of species. So now we click on the tab for soil reports and we go again to vegetative productivity. You can see our map is refreshing. Go to productivity and then click on view soil report and for each of the soils, it provides for us a site index rating for each of the species that for which there is data associated with that. 
So you can see for the bath soil, there's a site index rating for black cherry, northern red oak, and sugar maple. For the Langford soil, we have site index information for a, a greater number of species. Now, if we want to record this information and be able to view it later, we can go to the upper right hand corner, click on Add to Shopping Cart. We click on that button and it gives us an option to save this information into a shopping cart. The shopping cart is free. When you're done, you click this tab in the center, top center of the page, and it says shopping cart free, and you're able to download and then export a, re a soil report for all of the different pages where you've selected information. So that's a simple look at how to use Web Soil Survey to gather site index information. There's an enormous amount of data that's available on this website, and I would encourage you to plan to spend an hour or two just clicking on different tabs and learning what you can learn about the forest soils on your property.